Welcome back, welcome back. I am H O Talk Show, Sir Charles, Miss Max, A A Ron, and I thank y'all for staying tuned, and thank y'all for you know sending in uh, the good the good feedback, even constructive criticism is always 100%, welcome. We need for it for sure. Um, and you know, and uh, we are in this second hour, and we are joined by none other than the Honorable Doctor Cameron <laughs> Webb. <laughs> And um, and man, uh, thank you for joining us as always. Like we definitely do not take it lightly because somebody such as yourself, self, could be looking at you know like us little radio folks in Charlottesville and be like, nah, um, you know, like y'all small change, y'all small change. Uh, but I appreciate you know like your dedication to the community. No, for sure. Listen, you always got to come through for day ones, man. Charles, you, <laughs> that's right. You've been around since uh, before I even decided to come back to Charlottesville is when I first connected with you. So it's always good to hang out with y'all fellas on the weekend. That's right. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you taking out that time. Um, uh, and, you know, um, definitely um, give the wife our love as well, because uh, Max had mentioned earlier, um, you know, she she shouted her out as well. So, um, you know, definitely, you know, send, send our love to her. And um, she posted online, by the way, speaking of the Mrs. Dr. Webb. She, uh, you know, um, you know, was the one that, that that informed me when I saw it about, you know, the position, this this D.C. Yeah. Like like there's some guy in D.C. like they gave you this job. I don't know. Some people may have heard of him. You want to tell us about yeah. that? Yeah. Well, yeah, she did break that news. And Max, what's going on? Good to see you. Um, so. So, yeah, the the news that Leanne broke on Friday, of course, is that I that I'll be heading uh, to the White House to work. For President Biden, Vice President Harris, mm. I, I guess I'm saying that now, even though it's not a that's not officially their titles until mm. until the, the 20th. Yeah. But even still, uh, excited to, to join that team. I'll be working on the COVID response team, and uh, and my focus will be on equity in the COVID response. So making sure that that you know Black and Brown communities, communities of color, other underserved communities get what they need, rural communities, um, as we're you're know, aiming to to get through this pandemic and. And what that means is that, you know, when, when you hear the federal government say, oh, here's $1.9 trillion going to uh, COVID response, you know, the question we always ask in our communities is, yeah, how much of that are we actually going to see? And so, um, yeah. you know, we're, we're really lucky to have uh, an administration that centered equity at the table and, and yeah. said, we want to make sure equity is, is front and center. And so um, I'm excited to do that work. I had a lot of long conversations about, so what, you know, what is the vision? What are you guys thinking? And they were just saying, let's Let's make sure this is fair for all Americans. And, and I said, sign me up. Yeah. So, Cameron, awesome. is this one of those look at God moments? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> Listen, this is Romans 828. It is straight up, you know, when, when you say, uh, you know, I, and I said this from the beginning, I said, you know, God, I just want to be used. It's that that idea that from from Isaiah, the, you know, you know, the, the here am I. Right. And, mm-hmm. and wanting to be in those spaces to to be able to um, to do some good. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I thought God was leading me down this path running for, for Congress over the last year and a half. And, and I said, listen, I don't know if your will is for me to win this race or what, but, mm-hmm. but you know, I'm here. I'm showing up every yeah. day and I'm working hard. And, and you know, lo and behold, the Lord's purpose for me mm-hmm. was to take that, turn that into this opportunity to mm-hmm. work not just on behalf of the 740,000 people in this district, but on behalf of 300 right. million Americans. Yep. You know, Bigger plans. You know, that's, yeah. that, you know, I think it, it's um, it's exciting. And it doesn't take away from how important the work here locally is, because I'm still passionate about that. But it just says that in this moment, in this season, uh, he, he wanted me to be uh, doing something a little different. Well, I'm awesome. going to say, Dr. Webb, you have full permission to do a George Jefferson walk right when you walk through the doors. <laughs> you, you better make sure you hit that thing hard, because all the work you put in, make sure you got a little bop to you when you walk in there. A little man. bit, a little just bit, a little bit, just a little bit, not too hard. Yeah, you know, you know, and um, like I, I think, I think that's a great segue, actually. Um, you know, uh, like into the crux of things because you know, uh, like one of the reasons that, that that we appreciate you and we celebrate you is because because you're one of us. You know, like let's 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 be real about that, right? And 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 so, you know, while while there are a lot of naysayers right now when it comes to you know the COVID you know, 19 virus itself. And now we're talking about the vaccination, right? Um, You know, and I would like to think that we as a people have gotten to the point to where we have, you know, those, those who come from us that are in these power positions in these high positions that we feel we can trust. Unfortunately, that's not the case, right? Um, Like, so there's a lot of mistrust, which is granted, you know, like we have a history in this country within the medical field. Um, To this day, there's still articles and, you know, Giles, we, we, we've talked about on how there's, there's, there's some black people who are saying that they get turned away from the hospital. Their doctors tell them you can just go home, you'll be all right. And then they, and and their condition with COVID ends up, you know, ends up worsening. So, so, you know, 
I'm like, I know you're well versed in this. So even before we ask any particular questions, maybe you yeah. give us some of your top sort of myths out there like that you would like to dispel about the COVID vaccination. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think we'll start off by saying this, the distrust uh, or mistrust of government and of healthcare. Uh, that we see among Black Americans, that's well earned, right? And, and you said it just like Deontay Wilder. To this day, you know, this is this is absolutely something that has been right. ravaging our communities. You go back and, and you know, we talk about the slave health deficit. We talk about the experimentation on Black bodies, you know, during slavery and subsequently. We talk about the eugenics movement that had a stronghold right here in Charlottesville, Virginia. We talk about you know W. E. B. Du Bois and the Philadelphia Negro in 1899, talking about how critical it was that we acknowledge the differences in mortality among black Americans in Philadelphia and just seeing across all these different areas. We fast forward to Dr. King saying of all the forms of injustice, the inequality in healthcare is the most shocking and inhumane. We go to 1985 with Secretary Margaret Heckler and the so-called Heckler Report that detailed all the, the disparities among black lives in the United States in terms of health outcomes. And then we say, you know, 18 years later with this large report called unequal treatment that finally highlighted exactly how deep that that those roots go in terms of inequality and in health outcomes and how some of it is rooted in provider bias right and so mm -hmm. you know throughout we know there's this legacy of black americans being uh treated unequally in the american healthcare system even when they're able to get access to the american healthcare system mm -hmm. All of that, all of those roads lead us to 2020 with that COVID, with COVID-19 kicking off and then now into 2021. And we're here, we're looking at some really sobering realities. We're looking at the reality that right now, one out of every 750 Black Americans is dead from COVID-19. That is a disproportionate impact that is tremendous. Mm. And then we're looking at the fact that finally, we've got this life raft is this vaccine, this vaccine that can stop us from contracting the illness that disproportionately causes us to be hospitalized and die. So then we say this vaccine, this thing that can be our life raft, is it actually good for us? Right. And that's where we start to have the conversation. Right. And I know for, you know, we're, we're on Zoom right now, so y'all can see, you see this fresh fade, right? I was at the barbershop yesterday, right? I was at the barbershop. <laughs> And um and and my barber uh, Jamal Dow was like he's like so Cam did you get that second shot of the COVID vaccine yet because we had been talking about it mm -hmm. and uh, and I was like yeah yeah so I'm now a week and a half removed from my second shot and he's like how are you okay. feeling I was like I feel 100 percent I'm fine and then uh this shop starts talking we shifted away from the whole LeBron versus MJ as the goat and we shifted to COVID vaccine and I said well so what's really what's the conversation y'all are having what are your concerns what are your considerations. One guy said, I'm not concerned, but it's really just, I don't know that I want to put something in my body every year. Then finally, somebody says, what is in this vaccine? And that, Charles, to the crux of your question, is really what this turns on. People are like, what is in this vaccine? Mm -hmm. Right, right. First thing I'll say to you is that, like, when, was, like when, when you take your kids to get vaccinated, when have you ever asked somebody what's in a vaccine? Have you ever asked that before, right? And it's yeah. like, and the answer is you haven't because you just took it on trust. You said, this is something that's got a track record and a history and mm -hmm. supposedly it's good for my kids, so I'll use it. This is a different moment because we don't trust the speed with which it was created. We don't trust, you know, and we're just like black people are already dying disproportionately. Tell me what's in this. Yeah. And no, I think that thank you detail. Go no, ahead. No, go can ahead. I stop you there? Because like, was that a rhetorical question or were you really asking that question? No, no, no. I, I know it's different. I was okay. going to say it, it, right, it's right. very different. All right. It's yeah. very different. But yeah. I, I think that I think that people see that and they're just like, so what's different? And then we're in this moment where it's been developed over one year in real time in mm -hmm. front of us while we're on social media talking about what we're reading, what we're seeing, you know, you hear things about potential ingredients in it. And so I just kind of broke it down. I was like, there are four ingredients in this vaccine, right? It's not, it's not anything crazy. There's the messenger RNA itself that just delivers that message to the, to the uh, body and tells it how to fight COVID-19. Then there's some lipids that are essentially the packaging that the messenger RNA comes in. Mm -hmm. They can keep it whole because mRNA breaks down really quickly in the body. So you need that packaging so that it can actually make it to, to, do its job. Mm -hmm. Then you've got some salts, like these four different salts, and their only job is to match your body's pH. So they're also similarly, it doesn't break down too easily. And finally, some sugars. And those sugars keep the lipid particles from sticking together when it's at cold temperatures. That's all that's in this vaccine, right? And people are like, well, what about luciferase? Because I read online and such and such, right? And it's like, that's not in this, right? That's a, that's a research tool that people use to see how things are entering into cells. It's been used for decades, right? But that's not a part of the actual vaccine. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think just slowly walking through all of the things, because like I said at the beginning, the mistrust is earned. And so we have to take our time brick by brick to build yeah. the trust to say, hey, take this. But here's what I'll, here's what I'll end with, because I want to hear your questions, but mm -hmm. I'll end with this. While we are working our way through that mistrust, people are dying every single day. 
mm-hmm. and you don't mm-hmm. get vaccinated and you're good to go the next day. No, it takes a month. And you look at the surge in cases from Thanksgiving and now Christmas, and we know the next few weeks are going to be the worst few weeks of COVID that we've mm-hmm. ever seen. And we and we still aren't at a point where we have enough trust. So that's where I'm yeah, excited about yeah. this job because I'm like, I'm here to try to help you know, bridge that divide. I'm not trying to sell anybody a vaccine. I'm just trying to save lives. So. And and why sure. is it administered in two parts again? Yeah, it's two parts because the first one kind of primes your immune system. So your immune system's like, I've never seen this spike protein from a COVID virus before. That's why we called it the novel coronavirus. For the first time, your immune system's like, what's that? I've never seen it before. And, and the mRNA is telling your body, look out for this. If you see it again, make sure you ramp up an immune response. The second shot really shows your body. Your body's like, oh, that's that thing I saw three weeks ago if it was the Pfizer or four weeks ago if it was Moderna. And it's like, okay, I've seen that before. Let me prime, let me get my immune cells running. And so now your body's got a good rhythm on how to rev up the immune system. And then finally, if you know two weeks after that, four weeks after that, you come in contact with somebody with COVID, the second that virus comes near you, your body's like, nah, not only do I know what it looks like, but I know how to rev up a response to it. It's not coming anywhere near me. So that's why it's two shots. There is a vaccine that's coming down the pipeline in a couple months from Johnson and Johnson, that's going to be a single shot. And we think that'll be a really effective way for us to reach some communities that are harder to reach. Mm-hmm. Now, in that regard, um, why are there so many brands? Why do they vary? Like, why why were some rejected? Whereas it seems like that the, I guess, like the national standard first was the Pfizer and, and, and then mm-hmm. the Moderna one was approved. Like, so when you give those ingredients, yeah. like, what was it about the ones that got rejected? Like, for instance, I heard, I think it's the UK where they had to stop travel mm-hmm. because they use one where a strand in it would like neg- would negatively affect um, other folks or something of that nature, but like, but theirs was a different brand. So why so many brands? So here's here's the way I look at it, right? If we if we go back in time to January of 2020, and we say, oh man, this this virus is going to kill 400,000 Americans by this time next year. Somebody better create a vaccine. Mm. How many people do you want to try to create a vaccine? You want one company to try? Do you want five companies to try? Mm-hmm. We had hundreds of companies who said, who raised their hands, said, I'll try to create a vaccine, right? Mm-hmm. And so we had that race to create a vaccine. When we saw promising results, we started to spend, as the United States started to spend dollars to help get those through and across the finish line. So we had something to fight this, uh, this virus earlier. So what happened is that mRNA vaccines, that messenger RNA vaccine, is a new technology, even though it's been under development for about two decades. But one of the good things about it is it can be uh, manufactured faster than other forms of vaccine. It can be mm-hmm. developed and created faster. And so that's why it, those are the first ones to market, the Pfizer and Moderna. Mm-hmm. Now, the next one, the one from the UK is the AstraZeneca vaccine. And uh, and I think there are a couple of things tied together there. Now, you talked about a different strain. That's, that's the actual virus. In terms of the vaccine, they had to halt that vaccine for a little while because mm-hmm. there were some bad outcomes back uh, late summer, early fall. They investigated those outcomes. They weren't due to the, the vaccine necessarily. So they said, okay, let's, let's keep going now that hasn't been approved in the u.s yet probably won't be until april at the earliest and so that'll be the next one online johnson and johnson's coming right there are a couple that are in a, at a point in the trials where we feel like they're the next ones up and that's just a matter of the success of the folks who've been making it to show something that works but the moderna vaccine 94 percent effective the mm-hmm. pfizer vaccine 95 percent effective this astrazeneca one right now they're in the uk they said 70 percent effective we'll see um, but again, we want to see that it works, right? And that's what we're looking for. So that's why you're seeing so many different candidates. And I think the key here is is portfolio di- diversity. You want to have lots of different vaccines just in case you say, well, you know, we don't have an ultra cold freezer, so we can't get the Pfizer vaccine. Moderna is the one that we're going to use. Or we can't do two shots because we're out in, in rural Southwest Virginia. We're going to use the Johnson Johnson vaccine because we only get one chance to get with people, right? So those are the kind of differences that you get when you have lots of different candidate vaccines. Gotcha. I know Aaron so has a for you. Oh, go ahead, yeah, Max. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask that you personally or anyone that you know ex- who's taken the vaccine experienced any side effects from it? Yeah, absolutely. So that, that's a great question. Um, so vaccine side effects are relatively common, but there's a spectrum of side effects, right? Mm-hmm. And so for me, every time I get a vaccine, like my flu shot and with this COVID vaccine, my shoulder's sore. That's a side effect, right? Mm-hmm. My shoulder's sore from the, at the injection site not something that that you write home about. Uh, Additionally, you know, I actually had the, after the first shot, I had a little bit of a headache, which was a different kind of headache than I usually get. Took some Tylenol, knocked it right out. And then I also had a little bit of like joint achiness. And I was like, oh, this is a little strange. Mm -hmm. For me, those side effects, I wouldn't even write home about it. Wouldn't break my stride. I'd go to work, no problem. Mm -hmm. My wife, on the other hand, 
After the first shot, she had a fever of about 101.8, and she was feeling really fatigued. It was gone by the next morning. So, you know, within 36 hours, fever was completely gone. Um, so she didn't develop the fever till about a day after the shot, and then the following morning, she was fine. Um, with the second shot, she actually had a fever of 102, uh, was wiped out in the bed all day. She would not have been able to go to work that day, just feeling really tired. The sun came up the next day like that. She was completely back to normal. Right. And that's the kind of, uh, you know, vaccine response that we see. And and we've said up to 15 percent of people will have that kind of a response to it. Mm -hmm. It was the expectation. And it's just because your body's it, everybody's immune system is a little different. And for her, her immune system was like, oh, you're showing me something that I need to fight against. Well, let's fight. You know, and it really got revved up. That also shows me that, you know, if she comes in contact with COVID, her body's going to be ready for to fight it, you know, and then that'll be a good thing. And so, but again, completely back to normal by the next day, we were, we were both fine, haven't had any complications, any issues. And the symptoms that we've had, I'll just list them really quickly. So headache, muscle, muscle aches, joint aches, um, fatigue. So just feeling really tired. Uh, and then some pain at the injection site. Those are the most likely things that folks are going to get with this vaccine. Um, if you have a history of of severe allergic reactions, it's a different thing, right? We, we watch those people really closely. And after everybody gets a shot, we watch them for at least 15 minutes, 30 minutes if you've had a history of severe allergic reactions.